So where are we actually gonna write our React code? Well, it's gonna be all done in this client folder right here. Specifically, we're gonna start off with redoxtagram.js and we'll be creating files from there on out. All these other files that are along here, you can even just open the client folder directly. Why? Because all of these files here are development related and they have nothing to do with the app at the end of the day. They're just tooling that helps us uh, get going and, and write good quality code. Now, uh, we also have a styles folder in here, which I have written all of the styles for this application in Stylus. Um, if you are not a fan of Stylus, you can also uh, convert this over to SAS or CSS, or if you would like to use your curly brackets, you can go ahead and do that. Um, it's not really a main focus for uh, a class like this. Now, let's go ahead and start writing React. First thing we need to do when you write a React application, what do you need? We need React. So we're gonna go ahead and import React from the React package. And anytime I'm doing import something from something, if you don't see a dot dot forward slash or some sort of path on front of it, that means that it's coming in from our node modules folder. And that's something that we NPM'd in the first video. Uh, you can go ahead and look at package.json and in that you're gonna see all of the different dependencies that I've had you installed. So when we go ahead and import something, there's no need for you to go ahead and npm install it yourself. We've already done all of the dependencies there. But if you were on your own building an app from scratch, you would have to open up your terminal and do an npm install react dash dash save dev. But uh, in order to keep the uh, numbers the same as this video series, I've done everything along for you. Um, next up, we need to import uh, just the render method from the React DOM package. And what that will allow us to do is actually render it out to HTML. Um, React will also work for things like Canvas and native and, and whatnot. So they've taken the DOM stuff and put it in its own package there. Uh, then we'll need a little bit of CSS. So we'll say import the CSS. Now Webpack is going to be handling all of the CSS loading for us. So there's no need to actually uh, have a link tag in our HTML at all. Um, Webpack will just put it inside of the JavaScript and embed it in a style tag for us. So we can say import CSS from, and then you give it a relative path to styles forward slash style dot style. And what that does is it's going to load in this one, which in turn will load in our normalizer typography in our animations file, as well as all the CSS that's uh, needed for this application. Uh, and then finally, when I'm working with an app, I just like to get something rendered on the screen to make sure that it's working. So we'll say render, and render takes two things. First of all, some JSX, hi. And second of all, a, a mounting point or like an element where it should dump this application. So we'll say document.get element by ID, and we say root. Now, why do we say root here? Because there is a div with the ID of root in our index.html, right? See this, div with the ID of root, that is where it's going to be dumped. So we just pass it a reference to that actual element and this JSX will be rendered there. Now, make sure that you're running your application. If you accidentally quitted it for whatever reason, you can start it again with npm start and it will give you the URL for your one. And there we go. You can see that Webpack notice that, oh, someone's trying to go to this localhost 7770 and it went ahead and built it for us. Now you see that hi is in there. I can go ahead and change this to hello, give it a save refresh and it'll say hello. Now in the future, we're going to look at hot reloading where if I were to change a component and say hello to hey yo and save it, it would immediately update it. You'll see that our everything is re-updating every time I save it. If I save this again, it rebuilds it, rebuilds it, rebuilds it. But in the future, it's going to go even further and refresh the entire page that we have there. So with that, let's get building some more components. Let's take a look back at our application, the finished version here, and see what are the different components that we need. Now, there's all kinds of different components inside of here, but what I'm concerned with is we've got this one big component, which is gonna be called main, and inside of that, that's going to choose whether it should show what I'm calling the photo grid, which is where you see all of them, and then when you click through to one, this is going to be called the single component. And, and that component may be made up more of like the photo component and the comments component. Now you can go ahead and look at the React dev tools here and you can take a look at what all of our components are. So we never mind all these provider, router, router contacts. We'll be looking at all of those. But if you open it up, look, we've got our main component here. And if you open that up, you'll see that we have a photo grid component uh, as well as we've got a header going on here. Now, if I go ahead and click through to one, you'll see that that photo grid gets replaced with single. Go back, 
that single gets replaced with photo grid. So we want to make this main component here as well as either the photo grid or the single. Each of those components are going to live in their own .js file. And I'm going to go one step further and make a components directory. And now anytime I make a component, it will live in that directory in its own file. So I'm going to make their components and I'm going to move into that directory. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a file for each of the three components we just talked about. So we need, we said we needed a main.js for the main one. Then we needed a photo grid.js. And then we also needed a single. Js. Hit enter. Now, if I take a look of everything I have there, we've got main, photo grid, and single. You can also go in your sublime here, main, photo, and single. So let's start with main.js and uh, we're going to say const main equals react.create class, where we have a render function. And inside of that, that is going to return a whole bunch of JSX. So inside of that, we want a div. Inside of that, we want h1 that says reduxtagram. And we want to wrap this Reduxogram in a link that I will actually always bring you home. Because if I'm on this one, if I want to go back to home, I want to click that. Now we're using React Router in this application. So we need to import, first of all, we need to import React uh, itself. Because whenever you use React.create class, even though we imported it in this one, we need to import it in every module that needs it. And then we'll also import uh, just link. And now link is just uh, a component that you can pull off of React Router. And we're going to use link in here. So it's a link and then we'll put reduxogram and we we'll say link to forward slash. Now that's not going to work just yet because we haven't set up react router, but it's at least going to render out an anchor link for us. Then final thing we need to do is export default main. And you could also, if you'd like, you could just put the export default right in front of the const. So export default const main. If that's a little bit confusing to you, we're going to export default main right there. And what that will do is it's going to allow us to go into our main application here, import that main.js, and we should be able to see this reduxtagram main component being rendered out. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Um, so right maybe below here, we'll say import components, import main from this is going to be a relative URL. It lives inside the components directory and we want to go for main. We don't have to put the .js on there. You can, but it's not necessary when using this. Now, instead of rendering out the paragraph tag, we render out main. Give that a save. We'll go back to our app here and refresh. You'll notice that immediately Reduxtagram is now showing up. What's really cool about this is if you were to change this to uh, Westuxtagram and give it a save. You see it, it will immediately be updated. I didn't refresh there. Change it back to Reduxtagram, save. It will be immediately refreshed as soon as, and why is that happening? Well, um, our Webpack is hot reloading the components, which means that uh, even if I were to make changes on this page, it would swap it out right on the page.